Hi everybody, my name is Austin Nova and welcome to Cover Me in Leaves. Now this game has been out for a year now, I think. It's it's really it's really short and uh, they uh, the developer or whoever created it, I think they consider this work uh, rudimentary. Uh, I don't I don't know. I mean, I guess everyone's their worst critique, but it's a uh, short it's a short interactive horror game so on bright minds and the end of all things okay i guess that's how you start but the style's pretty it's the end of summer sunset air weighing down like a blanket and your fingers trace the lines beneath my sleeve you drove me home and we sat there parked across from my house just waiting nervous chatter stolen glances giggling and then we kissed we all we Oh, yeah, we kissed. Okay. And then we kissed. It's the end of summer, and we're alone on that street, hidden from the prying eyes and gossipy gossamer lips. In a few weeks, you'll be gone for greater things. Just another bright mind lost to the coast. But as you held me, read to me, f finger fucked me behind that long forgotten strip mall, I could simply let myself forget. How soon this all must end. Oh, this is so scary. Maybe I read that wrong. Maybe that's not what it is. Uh, or it's the it's the grammar that's so scary. It was a small town even before I was born there. Those grumpling barflies, the uncles and the cousins with overflowing gut and healthy fear of God had all held down jobs at the lumber mill. Lack when times were better. They filtered from the pews, restless and stiff. There's a hopelessness here, one that soaks through the through to the bones. Is this game gonna make me feel grumpled? It's all rotting now, she says, that mill. But it was the kind of work you could take pride in. Chopping logs into packing trucks, they didn't need degrees to do that, did they? I nodded and smiled, and we pulled away from the churchyard. A thousand tiny crosses dig into the graves, a thousand tiny graves. A voice for the voiceless. Three weeks in the fall, and I get my first tattoo. A leaf. Just a single leaf, traced out of the soft side of my wrist. It's intricate and delicate, almost real enough to crunch, small enough to hide. Enough, but enough to hide behind, you know. I'm sure you know. I mean, I have tattoos of feathers. I guess they're close to leaves. I start going for walks, long walks, amongst the pines. There's nothing but forest here. I can let myself feel lost, but when I think of you, think of anyone, think of what they might say. There's this scratching, screeching, pilling at my eardrums. It's Sunday, and I'm not and I'm alone in the house. They only bother forcing me out of the weddings and the funerals. I turn on the radio and let someone else choose the music for once. The crickets hum, and the sun shines, and I'm allowed to exist. This is sad. Three minutes past noon means three minutes late to work, and something splinters beneath the wheels of my car. A sickening sound that carves through to the bone. In my rearview mirror on the road is a deer, a rotten splintered husk. I kneel down to make sure this wasn't my fault, but it's been here for days, so I get back into my car and I drive. It wouldn't have hurt, right? This is natural. This is natural. It's ashes and dust. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I I actually hit a deer, like, a little over a month ago. Did I tell you? I've been working at the old place in town. I'm not much of a bartender, but it's not much of a bar, either. And the tips are good. Plus, well, the tips are good. Yeah, bartenders do make some good money. I bought myself a Terra Decker the other week. I don't really think it's, it works, but the rest of it, it's nice. It's calming, a little introspective, it helps. I sweep out of the emptiness in my room, dressing it up in plants and flowers and rocks and a tiny little bird skull I found by the road. It's not quite home, but it's close. Alright. A little... morbid. My mom comes home one night, smelling fainty, faintly of wine. Did you hear about this nonsense with the bathrooms? 
I bite my tongue. Remember Jimmy? That kid from uh, school? Miss Turner sh said that she came home to sight of him tangled up in her finest Sunday wear a few years back, and she did the only thing that would be right for that poor boy. She had him ex exorcised? Ma? Exorcised? Exorcised? What? Yeah, she had him exercised, and it fixed him. Didn't it? Can't stay. Can't say it didn't hit, fix him. Uh, there's a beat. I let it happen. Say whatever happened to him. I'll give you three fucking guesses. What happened to him? I don't know. It's been a month. Did you know you're supposed to tip your tattoo artists? I had no idea. Had to save up a little extra this time, just to make it right. They asked me if my little leaf had healed okay. Any itching, any redness, any weeping or bleeding. But if you say yes, they might stop you from getting more tattoos, see? This time, I go bigger. I didn't say that. A whole branch. Leaves and flowers all curled up together. I'll never be able to hide it now. But my forearm is covered and perfect and gentle. And then it's morning, and my sheets are covered too. I strip the sheets and build a pyre down by the old shed. It crackles and smokes and screams black and greens and browns. A new bandage for my arm, a clean bandage, no need to worry. It's healing perfectly. Your tattoo or scars? It's quiet in the woods this time of day. Well, all times of day, really. But when it's light enough to see, just before the sun hits the trees, there's this moment of quiet. I can't help but savor it. This is how it used to be. This is how it could have been. You ever think it might have been worth it, trying to make a stand here? Show the young youngins that they aren't alone after all? Maybe, maybe. So is this person suffering, like, loneliness and depression? So it sounds like it. It's a trek, but I, I, I make it to the old lumber mill before sundown, a factory carved out of the landscape. A landmark. Gangrene. Gangrenous. The metal is rusted, the concrete overgrown. They used to say that there weren't birds left to sing in the woods, but I hear them singing now. Nature's calling in their depths. This, w this mill was a body in a box. These years, it's cremation, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. This is very somber. My ink never drips out here, but at night, I can feel it stirring. At night, it shivers and slithers and peels, my f peels from my skin. It whispers to me words of anger and, fur and fury and comfort. And then it's the weekend, and I swing by Mike's. He's always got he's always got time. These days, I get a sp sprig of holly on my ankle and some flowers on my shoulder. We lock in another appointment next Tuesday. I've got plans for my collarbones. Ten past five, and the working crowd filters in. The beer's cheap, but most comes for for the company. You mustn't have a problem if you never drink alone. It was a long shift. I remember that. I've I've drank alone before. Uh, earlier this year, and I threw up at the bar, embarrassing myself. <laughs> uh, so if you go to the bar, don't go to the bar alone. And if you do go alone, drink responsibly. But drink responsibly in general. Okay. Uh, most nights I I just stand behind the bar, polishing glasses that were already clean and rough hackled. Man likes my ink. Apparently, they never get handsy, but the devil finds work for idle minds. He tells me that, and they laugh. They all laugh, and all I can do is smile. So I smile as politely as I can. He just can't help his gaze from wondering. In five years, this bar will be empty. Its stone turned to dust. <sighs> Not in a tropy, but nature. This town was built on borrowed time. It owes a debt. And when things return to the way th they are, or they were, the way they should have stayed, time will bury this town, and I won't be dragged down with it. I make a promise to myself. I swear on whatever I have left. 
I'll be gone by Thanksgiving. These are the kind of thoughts that get me through the closing But I'm still here. I still haven't left. Haven't even made plans. Not real ones. And we're deep into October. So I sell my car. I've always loved that thing. In a strange sort of way. It got me to school. Got me out of this shitty house in the summer. It's never been a fashion statement. God, I love it though. But if I could ever make it work here, then I'll never bring myself leave. So, I find a buyer. Give her a good deal. Say my goodbyes. I shrink my world. And then it's November. I peel the bandages from my back, from my ribs. It's not done yet, but it's close. Flowers, branches, trees. I'm covered in ink now, covered in leaves. It's a canopy reminder and a shell, black and green and brown. I'm alive and I'm held and I'm safe. Night, early morning, maybe I close up the bar, the long walk home. I don't feel safe because I'm not, but there aren't a lot of options, so I walk. Despite it all, it's a perfect night. Crickets call, and the moon is full, and owl hoots, the stars shimmer. There's a breeze, and for a single second, I feel safe in this world, and then I hear them call. He's a gangling man, with a stubbly chin, far too old for me. Not what it could even matter, not that it could ever matter. His car is an awful half-truck, with two doors too few, and he hangs out his window with a waggling tongue. You heading my way, sweetheart? I smile as best as I can, I smile. I polite, a polite reply, just a few minutes from home, no need to worry. Oh, but he insists. Uh, of course he insists. There's a patch of damp on my collar, wet and dark, bleeding through to my shirt. I keep walking, right foot, left foot. You got someone to head home to? A boyfriend? A husband? I can hear my blood pumping, flooding through my veins. Keep moving, just keep moving. He's out of his truck now. Oh no. That's not good. Ah, but it's a small town. People talk. He knows me. Of course he knows me. Knows what they say about me. Knows I've never found myself a real man. You want someone to teach you? Then, sweetheart, let me teach you a few things. Show you how a girl is meant to behave. Wouldn't want them to re th thinking you a queer would be. You queer. He reaches for me, reaches for my skin. Then he falters, falters and stares his hands stained black. It pours from me in waterfalls and streams. Every inch of me is bleeding, bleeding black and brown and green. A cascade of color whispering and flowing and screaming and beautiful. All my anger and fury and comfort. It covers me. It buries me. It's all that I am. A forest in flight. His eyes are wide. So are mine. I'm everything he expected. Deep down. I'm everything I was so scared to be. And now I reach for him. One by one, I take his bones and lay them by the riverbed. When winter comes, the water will rise, and I will never think of him again. Every inch of him was borrowed, every speck of dust, every brutal, brutal thought. One day, my debt will be paid too. I will be gone, and I will be everything. But I will not waste my in insignificance, not like he did. I am not going to die in this town. My bags are packed. They've been packed for weeks. The bus driver glances at me. The girl with the stained skin and matted hair. But he's not paid enough to ask questions. I find a seat at the back and collapse. I let myself breathe. I let myself e exist. They stay with me. Every little leaf, every branch and seed and flower. Maybe someday I won't need them. Maybe someday I'll have grown. And they'll have grown with me. But they're tied to me now. They cling to my skin, so I let myself be held. The bus pulls out, and just like that, I'm gone. A rumor, a memory, a topic for the holidays. That's all I can give them now. The last thing I'll let them take. The strange girl, the runaway. Just another bright mind lost to the coast.
Hope you're okay wherever you are. Well, I hope, Elliot, I hope you're okay. And I hope you guys are okay, for those of you watching. So, cover me and leave. So, that... I mean, it was... In a sense of scary, like, it was more, like, dark on a personal level. You know, I think this game, it's... I don't know if it's necessarily Elliot or someone, a friend of theirs, or someone uh, out there, but I feel like a lot of it was personal feelings that was touched and put into this this game right here. And I think that a lot of us can take from this. A lot of us can relate to this. Um, so, uh, but that was Cover Me in Leaves. I, I, bought, I bought this game on... Uh, the indie website and I paid a little bit extra because a little bit extra would go to the uh, developer how about the developer a little bit but uh, I got a steam key for it on steam so it might be on steam too I'm not sure but anyway thank you everybody so much for watching and of course I'll see you in the next video have a good one